How? <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, I'm gonna hide. <laughs> I'm not cool enough. And you know, I would rein in my thirst more for their characters, but frankly, I believe that their thirst is roughly equal to mine, so yeah. fuck it. <laughs> Soaker apparently showed the sketches I did to them. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jonas, what makes you think I would do such a thing? You literally telling me as such? <laughs> Please tell me we're live. Yes, we're live. Yep. Yes, we're oh, live. Good. <laughs> good times. Shout out to you, Maxie, if you're watching the VOD. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> just, just, dignified, dignified, dignified. <laughs> I dignify that with response. Out, please. Okay, so the overlay is working. Yeah, I can see it. it looks great. Oh, sweet. Yeah, That's is that awesome? It is awesome. I, I, oh, let me see. I haven't seen the new overlay. Yet. Yeah. Oh, so good right i mean I, I i reached out to ashley who does honeycast and i was like you've got these neat little things on your screen when you do your thing you know how do you how do you um do that and she pointed me the link and i was like oh hell <laughs> rook's got to see this um so yeah there you go <laughs> I see that. that's magnificent Jonas, right? you're a magnificent bastard i read yeah. your book <laughs> you're ready. Come on. hey c9 all right, so uh, it feels odd because uh, you can't actually change the size of anything except the text on this. Well, you could you could use transform to resize the uh, actual um, like the, the source window. You know, you yeah, can make, you can make I, I change the source window and it, everything stays the same size. It resizes itself because it's technically a uh, browser window capture. Right. Oh my god, how did I just notice that the K in Byte has antlers? <laughs> how did I just notice that? <laughs> how did you just notice that? How did I just notice that? Hey, Legatron, come on, no spoilers now. <laughs> I know. Yeah, some people do want to see this, like, when they get up in the morning. <laughs> He says, sorry, he effed up. Some people don't watch TV till like 9.30 p.m. <laughs> you know, my dad did something to that once. Or I think it was my dad who did this to someone. He was in a, he was in a, a, a store talking to, uh, to someone about a football game. He's like, I forget which team, which game. It was probably the Cowboys, knowing my dad. He's like, a shame they lost, huh? <laughs> and the guy at the counter just kind of froze. <laughs> and he was like... I was recording it. <laughs> mm. Oof. Ah, good times. <laughs> was it you that first told me, Zerg, about that urban legend about how the dude, like, <clears throat> spoilered um, Return of the Jedi? Or no, 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 no. Um, Empire Strikes Back and got, it, got his ass, like, kicked out of the movie theater? Ah, uh, that doesn't sound like me. Mm. I don't remember telling you Somebody that. Somebody told me that, like, like there was, there's this about uh, uh, this guy who, like, in '81, he like stood up at the beginning of Empire Strikes Back and was like, "He's Luke's father." I mean, and the closest his, thing he got like destroyed. The closest thing I remember seeing like that was there were uh, some advanced copies of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows that leaked on the internet. Oh, yeah. Man. And there were people standing in line to get their copies of the book at midnight. And there was at least, I saw at least one group of people do this, drove up in a car with a megaphone and started, <laughs> like, yelling out every character who died in the book. so messed up. It's so mean. I'm not even a big Harry Potter fan. I would be pissed at that. <laughs> I used to be a big Harry Potter Harry, Harry, yeah. Harry Potter fan. I used to be a big Harry Potter fan. Um, <laughs> Harry Potter fan? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's been, but then I, then I took an arrow to the knee. Anyway, so this is Hayseed Night. Yes. Did continue where we were.
Like, <laughs> yes, we have a in mis- chapter three. <laughs> we have a mysterious figure watching us from the shadows. Yeah, it's just a guard. Uh, I'm going to predict that this character's name is uh, George. I'm going to predict that this is the young knight that Jesper met on the bridge. Now he's now old and grizzled. So he's he's the old grizzled veteran now. Yeah. yeah. Grizzled okay. is such a great word. Ah. So. Uh, far up in the battlements of the walls that surrounded the bazaar, two purple gleams stalked his every move. The observer scurried through the shadows, trying to find the optimal route to sneak into the sea. Couldn't be done haphazardly. A crowd was an enemy far too terrible. Just imagining that formless mass of eyes sinking into her skin, chilled her to the bone. Ada <laughs> looked like he was just... He was hanging on just fine in any case. A mere rope and a one-story fall wouldn't be enough to take out a deer she had chosen as her apprentice, with or without the god's damn giant treatment itself. I shifted towards the lonely guard posted toward the plaza in a long stretch of the rampart, taking him out in a loud enough manner and throwing his body into the plaza for everyone to see would prove a perfect distraction. Ah yes, distraction by murder. How to avoid killing him in the process, though, was a question Ader would have brought to her attention. To be fair, there would be others such him. as, did he deserve that, or what about his family? But moral dilemmas are hard, and her personal sensor didn't have to know. <laughs> <laughs> Silent feet advanced toward the guard. Our morally ambiguous assailant raised her hammer against her unsuspecting victim, poised to turn the guard's helmet inside out. The hammer struck with a soft thunk, crumbling the steel in such a way that made it look like tin. Anna took a couple steps back as her thoughts began lurching against each other. Crumpled like tin because it was tin, and there was only a, and there was only a smith in the whole city making a custom order of fake tin armors. <laughs> With eyes wide as platters, she struck the helmet once again, and again, and again, and again. She battered against him, and yet the guard refused to react to this brutal attack like he was supposed to. That's very inconsiderate of him. He didn't fall forward and plunge down into the plaza. He didn't crumble to the ground like a bedsheet. He didn't gasp or scream or bleed to, bleed to his death. He didn't even have the decency to turn around before speaking. You must be the one called Aina. Basketet. Ancient Basketet, older yet than everyone, one every Baron once knew. <laughs> Old and rough with words that stumbled from ear to ear, unsure if they were to be spoken, for they were directed at someone far too great for them. His words masked the sound of shuffled feet until it was too late. A newcomer lunged at her before she had the chance to turn and face them. <sighs> Aina. Must not reach the deer. Definitely not a guard. <laughs> Are you sure? I have my doubts. <laughs> Ada tried to jump back and forth, struggling to wiggle her head out of the powerful arm that had her in a headlock. The nature of her targets had never been a concern as far as she could think back, but her instinct told her it mattered now more than ever. The creature restraining her threw its head back, and soon a high-pitched sound filled the air. To the uninitiated, it would have seemed nothing more fateful than a minstrel blowing a flute, or perhaps a sheet snapping against <clears> the wind. It's a wolf's howl. <laughs> no, no. Another there's no wolves. They're a myth. Posted through the walls, turned their bright eyes towards her, but only one of them began moving. You know, this wasn't exactly what I had in mind when I told my crew that I wanted our reunion to uh. pull you over. But you've got to admit that a hostile takeover is just our kind of surprise party. All right, I'm bracing myself. Is there another hot character I'm going to have to deal with? <laughs> Ada's eyes twitched with every word. She looked up, finding a bright row of teeth above her. Don't hold it against me, sis. We're just following orders. Ekka. Her voice sounds familiar, too. We yeah, well, that's all Ekka. the trial of one Chanthurian refugee, Adasin, son of Gurfan, sailing from the now extinct ravine of Olitz. Before we start, I'd like to remind you all to mind the pitchforks, keep your fawns by your side at all times, and please refrain from throwing rocks. And for the Madison love of God, put your cell phones on vibrate. <laughs> son of Thula, of making an attempt on the life of his liege, Lord Burbeth of Askadeth, son time. of Thumar, with whom he shares a father, but not a mother, half-brother, son of a maid. They don't need to know our God's damn life story. Get to the point already. Ahem! The Imperial <clears throat> Edict of Estates and Privileges dictates that any commoner accused of a crime against a noble house, be it in their own lands or in a foreign province, 
shall be disposed of as the highest ranking member of the affected family sees fit. In an auspicious and entirely unexpected subversion of this law, however, Sir Askadap has decided to hold a public trial for this peasant. Addison will be tried and judged instead by the city of Heirloom as a whole. In which he has committed the following additional crimes. <laughs> unlicensed mendicancy, unlicensed smithery, unlicensed rivet pelling, street fighting, destruction Ooh. of property, unlicensed reparation of said property, collaboration with a known sevy, public drunkenness, and, and peeing on my leg that one time he was drunk. <laughs> How do you Whatever, dude, you're these treat. charges, Addison? I plead <clears throat> innocent! Innocent! Mr. Bard? Oh, Hirab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God, guard my toes! I didn't think I'd make it on time! I heard the words execution and one hide, and I feared the worst! But you're here! You're fine! As fine as only you can be! Oh, my sweet cockeyed horn eating ladder! <laughs> Don't wow, wow. I, I like bet you, again, you dumbass. You I bet you say that to all the guys. <laughs> Bard, uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, look, I really appreciate the thought, but uh yes, yes, you can apologize all you want later. We have more urgent matters to attend to now. Like your sudden bout of frontal nudity. Where did your stupid cape go? One night in jail and you're coming back with tattoos? Haven't I taught you anything at all? Who's yeah, you that did. scraggly singing poodoo capering around with a hat stuck to his magnificent horn, Zeograph? Oh, oh, I oh. see. I see. I've learned something about you, Elba. <laughs> <laughs> no princess for you. I'm not surprised, but... <laughs> I'm not surprised either. His, his relationship <laughs> with Seth seemed a little perfunctory, so... <laughs> yeah, just a tad. <laughs> Hillegrab contemplated his feet wistfully, combing the ground in search of the right words to define 30 years of history buried beneath the pavement. Guff kind of keenly skipped this preamble. I am no poodoo, my lord. I'm just short, which is sadder. My name is Guff, son of Egai. Yes, that Egai. And I am Addison's oh, yeah, yeah. herald, manager, landlord, and lawyer. Kindly ignore anything this lumbering psychopath may say about me, Sir Askadath. Not content with having my father killed unjustly and destroying my life, this backstabber <laughs> seeketh to get rid of my best friend as well! I'm only letting you stay with Adder if you promise to keep personal grudges and slandering comments to yourself, Yoff. That goes for you too, Sir, sir Askadath. Illigrab wiggled his mustache nervously as he turned his face away. Perfect chance to strike. Guff didn't waste any time doing vocal warm-ups. He jumped straight into the scene, dragging Aider's oblong head under his armpit like a solid piece of evidence. So what has this hapless backwater haven of peace done to deserve a sentence as ostentatious as attempted magnicide? Was the sight of his hunched neck and his deformed hands such a fence on Sir Askadop's eyes that he longed for a quick death? Ada punched Sir Askadop's brother, Lord Burbeth of Askadop, in the face. I need a second to review the case for the defendant. <laughs> you know, that is a good... <laughs> I mean, you know, lawyers do generally try to find out what they're accused, uh, what their client is accused of first. <laughs> I thought you were going to rumble there again, too. I like that. Nothing! I, I mean, I, I didn't do it just because I have felt like it. That nutcase was obsessed with Dana. He wanted to prove she was a golem or something, so he pulled out a knife and he pointed at me, so I ran away. But then he began cutting his robes, so... He began cutting in his robes, so... So what? What? Dana is a golem, Adder! Nothing but a puppet made of metal and marble. She moves with magic. She could have eaten that knife if she wanted. She could eat knives for breakfast every day if she wanted, and I'd still stand up for her anyway, because she's the best boss in the world, and nothing else matters here. 
I go to bed thinking that you've finally gotten over your Ah, there's addiction. another good word. Only to find that you've lost your mind overnight. <laughs> I know what that one means. You fool yourself, I do too. But not me. <laughs> yes, I also I do. <laughs> we're just afraid of letting him show you what her insides look like. <laughs> I'm going to show you what your insides look like if you <laughs> shut your yapper this instant, Gilf. <gasps> you dare threaten me? <laughs> me? The deer that took pity on you and fed you and found you a job when you didn't even have a corner to crawl into and die? The deer that loves you like only your mother could? You turn on me over a stupid piece of... Are you done over there? Oh, I'm done with this golem humper, all right? <laughs> and let us proceed with the testimony of the first God. eyewitness. Sooneral of the lucky bastard, if you please. The old woman coyly walked toward the center of the growing circle of attendees. She nodded respectfully <coughs> towards Illagrab, then made a small curtsy with her apron. Oh, three. I saw it, sir. I did see it with my own eyes. I watched that blonde hornless fawn nearly get his snap punched off his face by Adder here, no less. <laughs> Just when you think you've seen everything in this city. Could you describe your relationship with the defendant, miss? Oh, it's nothing like that, sir. Adder's just a client. One of my favorites, too. So poor and yet so honest for lying as much as he does. <clears throat> nothing like that little fiend, Gioff. <sighs> yes, Adder is such a good boy that not one day had I seen him mad. Not one. Till last night, that is. Goes to show you never know with his ilk. Some screw must have come loose in that thick skull of his. I'm telling you, sir. It's all that butting heads business they do. Ah, ah. Ah. Did you hear that, peasants? This stag is clearly out of his wits. He's a danger to us all. Elbar, wait until your turn to throw baseless accusations. Sooner <laughs> old, try to recall, please. Did Ada really explode all of a sudden? Or was there something else affecting his reaction? Well, I didn't want to assume it would be something bad, but they did babble a little before that. Lots of fancy words thrown around. Scared the clients away from my tavern faster than Gioff's music could. Uh, but I can't really help you there. It all flew right over my head. I couldn't get half of what he was saying either, but that don't matter here, man. Tell him what happened then. And tell him how he digging and drew a sword at me. Oh, there you go, making up tall tales again. That was no sword, twas just a knife. If only that stupid, stubborn, stumpy horns hadn't... Miss Barkeep's mouth opened and closed slowly as the words failed to take form in her mind. Resume your testimony at once, woman. It happened last night, not last week. Sir, I can't believe I'm saying this, but... I forgot what the blonde boy did after that. Miss Barkeep's voice became nothing but a whisper as she finished testifying. A senile bartender and a Ooh. ravenous street shrub gone mad? This trial couldn't get any more pointless if it tried! Are you all convinced now? Am I allowed to put an end to this torment? Elba, that's not how trials... Actually, never mind. Sooner it was the only I witnessed. <laughs> Burbeth is still knocked out. And Aina is thankfully... Aina! The beast! That's it! That twat tried to hurt the beast! I told him not to! He should have listened to me! They'll come for us, you'll see! The beast will come! Isafik, save us from them! Wow. I knew she was crazy to hire me, <laughs> but this is a whole new level of insane. <laughs> Agya, uh, master of the lean in. <laughs> she seemed fine a moment ago. You <clears throat> dastard. Have you paid this hag to speak in your defense? You call this a defense? She got far too many cobwebs in the attic if she really thinks boss is anything but a dyed doe. Y'all gonna get your eyes checked, darn it. Who in the name of the Hatsa is this boss of yours now? The oh, beast. here we go. Oh, the beast. Sooner, oh, please. Come back to your senses. Beasts are nothing but old wives' <laughs> tales in this day and age. There's no such thing as... And Q. Have you seen that beast of mine? <laughs> Telegraph's sigh could have been heard from a league away, deeper and louder than the gaps and screams shared by the mob around them. He gently pushed the barkeep aside after wordlessly reassuring her that everything would be okay. Well, look what beat has decided to sneak its brains out of its hole. 
You all know him, dear jury. The last merchant of the Saxerat. Just the calcified Varhan skeleton we needed in this freak show. I gotta pause for just a second to say. You call a mouth, or I'll stitch it shut for you, y'all. But I really want to appreciate the expression on our nobleman's face here on the right of the screen <laughs> in the context of everything else. I know this is an expression he's already made, but the thing I enjoy about the expressions in this game is how different scenes recontextualize them. <laughs> this is the face of a man who just regrets every decision that he has made today since waking up. <laughs> yes. this really because they have all led him to this moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Try all you want to scare me with scatological threats, Burtok? I know deep down you are always happy to see your godson. So happy that if I had eyes, I'd pull them out of my skull again just to avoid seeing you. Now move before I move you, Scullion! The sun would rise and fall twice before I was done insulting you and that stuttering mumble crust you foisted on me. Can someone please tell me why in the name of Baitatse and all the gods both big and small are we letting a witch walk in like this? This witch is the father of the absent eyewitness, your grace. So perhaps he can share a little insight on the whereabouts of the only creature in this kingdom that could have a shot at saving the defendant. Didn't you just hear me, you earless squeaker? That's what I'd like to know. I don't care what that little vandal does with her <coughs> knights, but she didn't even bother coming home to light at the forge today. Say what? Ana wouldn't skip a day of work if her life depended on it. Something's gotta have happened to her. Calm down, you two. Look, Red, Ana and Adder went out for a drink last night at my expense. Your daughter had a bit of a wardrobe malfunction, so Adder was a gentleman and lent her his scarf. And then he decided to punch feudalism in the face while he was out. <laughs> Wherever she is, she's not here. So why don't you go and wait for her in the temple? Mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll come back sooner or later as usual. Not so fast, Tumbleweed. I have some words for this daughter, Sullier, first. How dare you take Aina to a watering hole without my permission! If anything's happened to her, I'm gonna kick you so hard you'll have to wear your balls as a bow tie! Well, the darn patron, you better hurry up or I ain't gonna have no neck to tie around. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Adam. <laughs> what are you babbling about, you ragabash? Drag your sorry tail here and help me look for my daughter at once! <laughs> my boy Adderdim would gladly accompany you on your deliria, but there's a minor snag in the way. They're trying to hang that ungrateful lump of barely cohesive musculature you call an apprentice. And that's it? You weak livered milk drinker! What kind of excuse is that? These ruffians try to calcine me once a week, and you won't see me complaining! See, Anna? This is why I like hanging out with Brett. He never takes the whole execution <laughs> thing personally. <laughs> <laughs> so now you want me to look at him, huh? I, I think this trial's gone off the rails a bit. <laughs> Wait a bit. Hey, look, he's, he's just... <laughs> You know, I knew this was going to be ridiculous, but I still somehow failed to predict exactly how ridiculous. <laughs> this is what I get for trying to lighten up the mood. <laughs> Are you all trying to make a fool out of me? Stop disrupting this trial at once! <sighs> I swear by my tent that if you don't put an end to this grotesque parade, I'll skip the protocol and cut this idiot's neck myself! What is he being accused of, anyway? Punching a noble in the face and working for you, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you listening to yourself? This idiot couldn't hit a Magadar in the ass with a rebound fiddle! Finally someone with a lick of sense! So, you agree there must be a logical explanation for his recent behavior, right? Such as magic, for example. Come on, Pertzak, why don't you tell the audience how you used your spooky, stuffy wizardry to cast a spell on Adder? 
You really think if I still had the power to make anyone do anything, I'd let these dunces treat me like they do? Oh, come on, old teaser, play along. It's not like they could try to kill you any more than they already do. I'm not saying there wasn't magic. I'm saying I wasn't the one who did it. Merchant raised one of his bony red fingers and pointed it toward the crowd. I'd recognize the stench of a death if a thousand leagues away. And this place reeks. Don't try to hide yourself now. After a few uncomfortable glances, the makeshift jury segued into two groups. At the end of the new path formed between them stood Elvar flabbergasted. Captain of the guard needed a few more seconds to realize that this was not about him and stepped sideways, revealing a red-haired gazelle standing rather conspicuously against the crowd. Stop with your portents, crone! You can't possibly be talking about her! This is my... Sep? Who is this Sep you speak of? This is Jacef, as the witch said! Princess of... Princess? Is that what you're going by now? <laughs> Whatever happened to calling yourself queen? Was the throne too small for her majesty's ass? If you could eat all that envy, Giov, perhaps you would have a butt to sit on. Whoa, whoa, hold up! Hold up right there till my head stops spinning! You too! Unlike a certain orange parasite, I don't have time to sit around stuffing my face all day. Indulge in hedonism all you want. It is work that shapes the man. Though I guess round is a shape after all. Big words for someone that looks like a deer sawn in half. Funny you should mention size when you look like two gazelles glued together. Fat ass! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got it, Geoff. <laughs> grab on Geoff's tail to stop him from heading off into the audience wielding an ode as a club. Oh, I knew this would happen. Should have gotten rid of Geoff as soon as I saw him. <laughs> so you're telling me that you... The Horned Mushroom and Jacef or Jacep or whoever she is now knew each other? I thought it had become obvious when he accused me of having his father executed and ruining his life. Though, honestly, I shouldn't say accuse. I am guilty. Just but try and hang me, why don't you? I think Geoff would go to such extents to fight for his father's name. That's on him! Not you, you sappy pine. That boy ruined his life betting on all the wrong numbers. Don't feel bad, Illigrab. You hanged a murderer as far as anyone else is concerned. This is why I ran away from home, you bunch of traitors. The heavy words vanished one by one until only silence remained. I was supposed to obtain answers in this trial, damn it, not questions! Why are these people calling you Sep over and over? Are you truly Jacef or not? Of course I am. I was born a Jacef, and as Jacef I live. Though I was known as Omaseptut for a few years, before I was free to take the name I deserved. These two are merely family friends bent on resisting inertia and clinging to the idea of the child I was. This changes nothing between us, Sir Askadath. My role remains the same. I am Jacef, brought from the brink of oblivion in the sands of Basaxarat to be raised in the Desert Rose while I wait to build my kingdom anew. That's the well, that story explains my mother used everything. to tell us anyway. <clears throat> Remember when Thor would call us over to have dinner with the whole family? Oh, those were the days. Enough! Is there anyone in this trial who hasn't seen you in diapers? Whoa, well, let's not bring that into this. <laughs> this much just as confused as the rest of y'all here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this bed swerver's seen her with far less than that. Now, now, Red, let's not jump to conclusion. Adder is a proper southern deer and my best friend while at that, and the only girl he's ever dared fantasize with is that painted rock you call a daughter. I can vouch for the fact that he has never, ever in his life said anything about spending a night with a gazelle. Gaff pulled Ader down by the news. And much less this one in particular. Right, Adder? Ha <laughs> 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 runs deep, you little truant. <clears throat> oh, come on, patron. Look at me. 
I mean, listen to yourself. Who'd ever want a deformed buck like this one here? Hands <laughs> like a shovel, face like a shoe. If you saw me naked, you'd know there's always someone better to do. I'm gonna need proof of that. Of better things to do. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm sorry for interrupting oh, our great. little Look dainty nice family <laughs> reunion, but this will get long if we don't hurry it up. May I remind you all what we're trying to achieve here? Shut it, plant! I wish to hear what this old Foji has to say about those two first. Foji? I'll be brief. Foji. <laughs> Three foot of blow the red man delivered upon Ader's stomach. The boy crawled over his cane, displaying the burns that ran across his chest and shoulders clearly for all to see. She did this! I'm sorry, I did what? Hit him with a cane? Order you to hit him for me? <laughs> What are you accusing me of, exactly? Don't play dumb with me, Daughter of Tha! You know fully well that you have branded my property as your own! Employee! The word is employee when you're talking about a person. Already gone over this, Red. Indentured servitude was abolished four centuries ago. <laughs> Not in my temple! And you're lucky that's the only corner of the city where my edicts remain. If we were still in Basaxarat, I'd have this girl's palms flayed and all the windows in her house shut so she couldn't conjure a single ember again. Conjure? As in spells? <laughs> <laughs> the mob has just been waiting for this. <laughs> Get the sandfur! Burn her! Burn them both! Cease these senseless accusations at once! Weren't you the one who wanted to bring magic into this? Here's your magic! This shameless broad has been pawing at my daughter's apprentice for quite a few moons now. She could have been using him for anything she wanted. Red, I hope you realize you're making some very serious accusations. Lethally serious. <coughs> Do you have any proof to accompany them? You nope. have the word of a Sephi, and that was worth more than a thousand not back in the day. I'm afraid we don't have any foreign exchange consultants around, so I'll need to see some factual evidence. That much I can't do, old Fern. Be my eyes. What does the brand look like? The mob became a single whisper unit. Unity congregated around Elegrab. The tree man nodded and hummed every few seconds. After much mm. deliberation, the jury has decided that the brand seems to be, citing textually, a hat, either a young deer's, or a doe's, or a barhan's. You realize we can't condemn her with such a big error margin, correct? You're telling me this clumsy scamp didn't even bother making a proper pattern? You idiots! Do the sensible thing and put her hands on the marks! Ader and Seth exchange a brief look. <laughs> I'd sooner take a bath in the sewers than touch that flea bag. Who knows where it's been? Oh, yeah! I'm so full of fleas, they call me Adder the Prince of Deer! And you can catch mange just from looking at me! I got rabies, I got scabies, and don't even get me started on the eye! <laughs> touch oh, but wait, there's, there's more! <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate that they're both on the same wavelength here. So. Yeah. <laughs> Aider's, Aider's not quite that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even dead yet. Color drain from Aider's face. He glanced at Seth desperately, but she had her eyes firmly set on Elvar's. As you wish. But all you will manage to prove is that he starved for touch. Seth advanced gracefully to the ground, looking so keen as she walked that she could have fooled anyone to thinking that she was taking a stroll through her garden instead of making her way towards Ader. Hey, her quick, mind raised Gazery, Gazery. as she <laughs> thought about what he would say to her if these were his last words. Thought about how much he wanted to headbutt all of his acquaintances. Actually, that was all he could think of at this point. <laughs> Seth had, thankfully, far more poise than that. She didn't spare a word for him when she reached him. She merely took a finger to her chin and ran her eyes up and down the deer in front of her, acting like she had never seen him up close before. Ada pretended to return the favor. You like what you see, ma'am? <laughs> His confidence wavered at the end, breaking the effect ever so slightly. But it was enough. The public reacted with gas and slight disgust, while Seth shot a knowing smile in his direction. I'm afraid you're too tall for my taste. Or my reach, for that matter. If you could get on your knees for me... 
Tep extended her hands toward her, his shoulders as Ader took a knee, leaving them staring at each other in some sort of ceremonial naming pose. Think! Think of something! <laughs> Ader had Tep's plea clearly, but he had seemed to be the only one. The buck nearly smiled to himself, knowing perfectly well what this meant. As far as the crowd was concerned, the gazelle remained perfectly calm and still, but in Ader's mind, she was speaking volumes with only the slightest tilt of her head and the way she clasped his shoulder. Ada forgot that there was a world outside her eyes, feeling only the touch of her hands as her voice passed through his head. She sounded anxious and bidding, but for some reason, he couldn't bring himself to care. Her warmth was all he needed. Booming loud words began filling Ada's head, covering Seth's thoughts like a thick paste until it was impossible to hear her voice anymore. Ada tried to hold on to the whispers that remained, distraught, but it was for naught. He had to wake up and listen. Uh-huh. What was that? Yeah, uh, asking him to think may not have been the best plan. <laughs> Ader only realized that Sepp had been pinching his shoulder over and over, trying to get him to snap out of it once Illigrap's doubtful face over. Once he saw Illigrap's doubtful face hovering above his. I said that her hands seemed to match, though, again, that's hardly conclusive. It would be wrong to assume this young woman dabbles in sorcery just because she's a gazelle. We can't forget, however, that a known Sephi is accusing her of magically influencing Adder in some way. And it would seem that the boy is a little too... Uh, affected by her proximity to properly present his testimony. I told you he looked desperate. <clears throat> I will only ask this once, Uma Septut Jasif, daughter of Thar. What is your relationship with the accused? Well, okay, I'll tell you, but we may need to change this game's rating. <laughs> You're asking me? No, Adder. All I'm asking you right now is to shut your snout and let the lady talk while you get your own ideas in order. Oh, all right, all right. Think it with my mouth shut. Think it with my mouth shut. <laughs> think it for real hard. <laughs> Why are you leaving excuses to me? You're the smart one here. You think of something. Haven't you been paying attention? I was practically raised by these idiots. They'll know I'm lying. You want to tell them the truth then? That is not an option. Miss Jasif, if you please. Then don't lie. Just, just make the truth prettier than it should be. That's what I do every time. And how am I supposed to do that when I don't even know what the truth is? This ain't no philosophical question. Just, just, <laughs> just tell me what are we supposed to be? Nothing. That's a lie! Give me a truth, but better! Well, uh, we are, uh, oh, what are we? What are we? Uh, what are we? 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 So, what are we? I'm a gazelle. You claim to be a deer, but honestly, I'm not all that convinced you aren't actually the personification of a tuber. No, no, I mean, what are we, as in, what's going on here? You know, you and me. <laughs> Me and you, you know? It began making gestures that would have looked far more ridiculous than I've seen with normal hands, never mind his. <laughs> You're asking if I would be mad if you were to see someone else. You're trying your darnest to avoid the question. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't realize this was an interrogation. No, Adder. I don't care what you do with your free time. As long as you come over when I want you to. Will that be all? <sighs> Mm. Nah, I ain't buying that. Come on. You're really trying to tell me that you wouldn't get jealous if I walked up to a doe and hugged her and kissed <laughs> her and asked her to marry me? Not even a little bit? No, and to be honest, the possibility hadn't even crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Harsh. Of course. Uh, I mean, I, I get it. Yeah, you, you ain't gotta worry, because I'm the toothpick to your seven-course meal. Is that some sort of attempt at an analogy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure analogy, into analogy. So. <laughs> that is an analogy. Come on. Don't know, man. I'd never try that again without your permission. <laughs> Why does this game keep making the same jokes I make right after I make them? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm like a used tooth here for you and no one else. Because I gross everyone else out. <laughs> Oh, I see. Emotional chantage. Is that what this is about? What an unbecoming habit for a stag as handsome as yourself. 
the nerve you have, trying to hear me say how amusing and kind you are, not to mention brave and resilient. That's certainly not how I'd expect my favorite to behave. So, uh, <laughs> I'm your favorite, huh? <laughs> oh, you mean there are others? Oh, don't be silly. There can only be one favorite. Oh, well, that sets my mind at- wait, hang on a second, what? No, no, I refuse. No matter how you insist, I can't just choose one. I you just are all my favorites. so cute! It doesn't work are you alright there, Jonas? You have to pick one. <laughs> Why? Can't I love all my children equally? It's no. not love, it's law. Illigrip says that it's the parents' duty to choose one child to favor as the heir of their estates to prevent a divation of power and in fighting among their descendants. I need to have a word with Mr. Buntalos about his idea of age-appropriate lessons. <laughs> <laughs> the does coattails meandered behind her as she made her way through the per uh, pergola, except followed them closely. He also said that I don't need to worry about any of that because I'm not a doe like you. Is that true, Mom? Trail of ghostly silk came to a sudden halt. The doe turned around to lift the tiny gazelle between her arms. You know what, Sep? You are my only daughter. So that technically makes you my favorite daughter, doesn't it? <laughs> what does technically mean? Um, <laughs> kind of. That means I can technically keep my room? <laughs> no, dear. You are destined for far greater things. You will have your very own palace when you're older. Much, much bigger than this one. But I don't want to go. I want to stay here with you. I don't need a big room. It can be small. The smallest one! Holy horns! This is your room? For real? I didn't know Barhan fortune tellers lived in places this fancy. I mean, look at that! This place is bigger than my whole house! I gotta share it, too. A mere fortune teller could never afford it, of course. If gaze reading was the extent of my skills, I wouldn't be able to afford wasting time with indecise paupers like you. I ain't got a clue what you called me just now, but uh, that's all right, because here, I'll let you in on a little secret, ma'am. You've been fooled through and through. <laughs> this was all a test. A test? Hmm. So you mean to tell me all that sobbing about stealing your first kiss was just a lie? No friggin' chance, ma'am! I ain't letting a creep like you off the hook so easy now. <laughs> but since you got far bigger creeps than yourself hollering down your window, I've decided to heroically risk my own body to make you company. Until I'm sure you're safe and sound. <laughs> and of course, my little bribe had nothing to do with this decision. Yep. I mean, no, not at all. I was just trying to, you know, see if you could really read minds. Figure out my true intentions while I tried to resist your, your delicious pastries. <laughs> mm -hmm. My bad. How could I forget the legendary cunning of the roe deer? Uh, hey, now! Don't think you could get cute with me just because you got me to come here after all. I'm still mad at you. Real mad. Oh, honey, come on. You can't stay mad at your poor brother forever. He is no brother of mine. What would Thar say if she saw you two fighting like that? She can't say anything anymore, can she? Mom? Mom? Ooh. Mom! Oh, no. Ooh, burn. You didn't think I would let I you catch good. me with my guard down twice, did you? <laughs> oh, okay. It revolted up, his mind in a daze, his face covered in sweat. It felt like a volcano had erupted from his heart, setting his whole skin ablaze from antler to hooves. But that wasn't the most distressing part. Something was grabbing his shoulders, something far more powerful than himself. Something bright enough to show through his shut eyelid. He had lived through this once before and came out scarred, but his body refused to learn. Once more, the temptation to look at something his mind would understand overwhelmed him. He didn't find an angry fireball washing over his limp body this time, however, but a clear pair of blue eyes looking down on him. Except you were fond just now, but also I was there for a while too, but then there was this doe and, and a door, and then it got real scary and... You need to find a healthier outlet for those voyeuristic tendencies of yours, Adder. 
I have some suggestions. I love her top. Sep shoved her face so close that her horns touched Dater's. If you keep peeping through every crack you find, someone's going to end up poking your eye out, you creep. Strength of her grip intensified for a moment before finally letting go, putting it into the unnatural flush Ader felt all over his body. Both his skin and his thoughts began cooling down little by little as she walked away. You calling me a creep? You? <laughs> I hate to break it to you like this, ma'am, but I'm precisely the one that needs a lesson on keeping his hands to himself the most in this... Ader finally took notice of the world around him, an endless mass of fine sand extending in all directions, shining brightly against the blue sky above. The dunes of Bas Basakarat had been nameless antagonists in the tales that grandiloquent traveling merchants would share as they stopped by Ader's village, but he never thought he'd see the desert in person. This land wasn't completely barren, though. Columns of alabaster rose from the ground, forming magnificent colonnades just like those that decorated the Temple of Europe back in Heirloom. And then the center <laughs> of it all stood Sep, watching from a throne that sat in the nearest point between duration and amusement. Where are we? No. When are we? No, who are we? No, what are we? No, why are we? Don't change the topic. Whoa, 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 hold up! This ain't no memory, is it? I I'm thinking. I, I can hear my thoughts. Congratulations on your newfound powers of introspection. Powers of Thank you, I've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> no, Adder, this isn't a memory. This is something far, far more personal than that. I guess you could say that you are standing inside my mind right now. Though, a more correct way to put it would be saying that you are trapped. Say what? No way you could do that! <laughs> of course I can. I can do whatever I want inside my own mind. And as the ancient Bazaktet adage prays, an open door is not an invitation. You showed up uninvited, and so I have decided to lock you up like the burglar of secrets you are. <laughs> nice try, but I got enough of these inspection powers to tell you're trying to use my tricks on me. I ain't so scared of you. I'm just gonna eat any half-baked magic you ready to stew you cook up, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> See? Your advice is useless if I don't know the whole truth first. You don't know what happened either? I can only speculate as I try to piece together an explanation. My best guess so far is that our little bonding experiment worked much, much better than I anticipated it would. Inner clutches burns. Bonding sure is a fancy way to call what you did to me. The fact that you remember enough to be bitter proves that I did indeed manage to find a relatively harmless way to circumvent the curse. I've made a historical breakthrough, and you should be thanking me for my efforts. Oh yeah, thanks for the tattoos and all the nights I spent hollering down your window without an answer. What did you fix my mind for if you were just planning to act like you didn't know me? You like seeing me hurt like that? Mm, yes, yes, it's kind of a turn maybe on, honestly. not so cruel as to plan something like that in advance. It was more of a spontaneous decision. A change of heart, if you will. I realized that I quite enjoy tormenting cowards. I ain't no coward. I was just scared. You, you can't blame me for running away. You set me on fire. Did you spend well, a whole yellow. Of place? Ada looked up at the gazelle looming over him. He realized that he was trying to win conversation on a topic he didn't even want to recall. The weight of his anger turned to hurt under the pressure of her stare. Where are I mean, you going? <laughs> you can't just get mad and ditch every girl who tries to set you on fire. You'll be single forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go find the eggs and get you. You don't got to see my ugly mug ever again. You do realize that the part about being locked up wasn't a lie, correct? <coughs> this is my core. My retreat, the place where I go when it looks like the sky is about to fall on me. No one should be able to reach this deep within someone else's mind, and especially not you. Yeah, well, I saw Inception about 167 times, so... <laughs> I found my way out of deeper Are pits, you sure no talk worries. The only thing I care about is getting out of here before it's too late. Late? Really? You think you're going to be late inside a thought? Oh, that's precious. Please explain to me how someone as clumsy as you managed to slip past my defenses because I seriously can't understand it. All I'm hearing is blah, 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 Adder's dumb and I already knew that. 
<laughs> Time is not an objective reality in the same way a rock or your ignorance would be. An hour can go by in a moment when you're having fun, but that same hour can be a torturous eternity for someone in pain. Time lives inside your mind. A good gaze reader knows how to look inwards as much as outwards and use time in their favor. As long as I can keep my thoughts focused enough, time will remain effectively stopped for me. And for you, little stowaway. We could potentially have a whole eternity to spend together. Wait. Provided I don't die of a new first. Then again, I'm sure you'll figure out a way to keep me entertained. We have a lot to catch up on. Why was she freaking out on the gallows about trying to come up with an excuse if she can just stop time and have infinite time to think? That's a good question. I'm thinking about that right now. I can come up with an explanation. But well, I mean, she did mention that the key to this is keeping her thought, her thoughts super focused. I cannot imagine those circumstances were particularly advantageous to focusing her thoughts. I guess awesome. not. <laughs> I suspect if she gets out of this, she's going to lose focus and she'll forget what she was doing. A cup of wine manifested in the step's hand. She took a sip, grimaced, yes. and poured the rest on the ground where it vanished immediately. Then she tried to conjure another. So, what'll happen to us outside? You know, in the real world? We'll die one way or another, and no one will shut up about it. A Barhan witch and a one eyed horn eater. No, forbidden lovers die in each other's arms as their plot is revealed. Hmm, yes, that sounds great. It's very romantic. They'll write songs about us. Seb looked up from Wait, her are we in that moment? Remembering the taste of a cup of wine. <laughs> <laughs> you look awfully somber for someone who is about to spend an eternity with the most beautiful girl on Dachna and have fame to outlive him for years to come. Isn't this like a dream come true for you, Sir Adderson? No! And even if it was, it wouldn't be right like this. You're about to die for something you ain't done, and my first reaction was whining because you don't like me instead of trying to do something about it. You sure you want to spend an eternity with a buck like me? Of course not. All I wanted was to keep you out of my thoughts for the rest of my life. But seeing as how you have made your way into my mind quite literally, I'm afraid I don't have much of a choice. Willful resignation is a skill of its own. No, ma'am! No one's settling down for Adderson just because they don't think they deserve better. There's got to be a way to get out of here and make it out alive. I I'll get back to the trial and show them I did what I did because I'm dumb as a bag of rocks and you ain't got nothing to do with it. And How stubborn can you get, Adder? Am I not explaining myself properly or is it that you don't want to understand? I always knew you were a simpleton, but I refuse to believe you're this naive. You okay, so this is happening the during the trial. This is not All a flashback. The, everything else we saw was a flashback. I thought we were flashbacking to them in her room, and then everything else was from there. No, what what apparently was happening was like he was. They were going into each other's minds, remembering what happened before, and they just kind of kept going deeper and deeper, Inception style, until we oh, got to yes. this point. So this yes, is say. all happening during the trial. That's right. Okay. <laughs> and now this is the focus moment right here. Elmer no. wouldn't listen to a nobody like you if it cost him his life. The trial was a farce. A what? Seb tilted her head away from Ader, fixing her gaze instead on the empty vastness ahead of them. Sand trembled and bubbled up as it began rising and taking the form of a deer and a gazelle. A trial? What do you mean, a trial? You said it yourself. Peasants are a brainless lot. We both know that you have more than enough reasons to want that dear dad, but the mob... Mm, I'm afraid they will need a little convincing on who to root for when his head rolls. And why should I care about the townsfolk's opinion? My guards have more spears than they have pitchforks. Do you really want to give them reasons to make a martyr out of a street shrub? You should be basking in the glory of avenging your brother, but instead they're cheering for him. I get the impression no one seems to appreciate your efforts, Sir Askadath. They... they really don't, do they? After all I do for them, all the times I've tried to make it up to Burpeth for my mistakes. Precisely. You need to show them your better side, so that Burpeth may wake up and finally realize what kind of man his brother truly is. 
Your genius never ceases to amaze me, Jasif. I was too blinded by honor to realize that Burbeth's sympathy for the commoners lights my path to redemption. Yes, we shall hold a trial to show my liege how fair and compassionate I am. Munificent, too! I shall dispense a few coins among the crowd before the trial to remind the citizens of my... No, Askadath's <laughs> generosity. Their loyalty shall not waver when it's time to cast the verdict. And then I'll present the body to my brother as a gift. Mwah. Perfect. Just perfect. Grim didn't even begin to describe Ader's expression as a memory dissipated in the dust. <laughs> I only encouraged your optimism because I found it amusing, Adder. But I'm telling you now, it's hopeless. The balance was tipped from the start. So what do you want me to do then? Sit on my hands while he sharpens his sword? I won't be happy spending an eternity knowing you're about to get burnt to a crisp for trying to help me. I wasn't trying to help you, damn it. I knew there was no way you could win. I didn't do this to be charitable. I just wanted to make sure that I could see you face to face one last time and know you mean nothing to me. You don't owe me yeah, anything, that, Adder. That sounds exactly myself. like the like the actions of someone that someone would perform towards someone who means nothing to them. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. That is extremely convincing. To Sundry Ottaway. Yeah, I don't like you, Baka. <laughs> <laughs> Steps on back into a column that rose to her seat. She looked very weary and small, tired from fighting a battle that she would never share aloud. If you don't want me to stand up for you, then at least I'll stand up for myself just this once. This could be the last chance I get to prove I got a head over my shoulder, Sip. <laughs> Do you now? See, you're fine with this because everyone knows you got your head screwed on right. But if I don't speak now, I'm going to die being Adder the dumbass. My neighbors will say, remember Adder? And they'll go, darn right, ain't never seen a bigger dumbass in my life. And it's my fault, right? Because I let them. I thought if I didn't watch my tongue, I'd end up hanging myself with it. But that didn't make me smarter. That just meant everyone could put words in my mouth and make me dumber than I am. Yo, thought Shovel Hands was a soft-spoken boy. But no more. I'm going to get loud. I'm gonna get louder than ever, so Lord Snotty Snout's gotta listen. Addison, son of a father, ain't never shutting up again, you hear me? <laughs> You're really setting the bar high, aren't you? I've heard you talk even in dreams. Where else do you plan to... Hold that thought. Could you really be rambling as we speak? Steps ba sat back up slowly. Something had changed in her eyes. Ooh, I know that face. You got a plan, don't you? That's the sip I know. Smart as a whip and only half as mean. <laughs> what do you need? Just say the word and I'll get right to it, my queen. <laughs> That's a great start. But you are going to need more than mere compliments if you want to convince Elbar that you deserve a second chance. Uh, I I'm getting mixed messages here, ma'am. You think I got a chance or not? D didn't you just say he wasn't going to listen to a word I said? And he won't. You could warn him that his head were on fire, and he would refuse to listen to you on the basis of not liking the way you speak. He's more concerned with the envelope than the letter. If you manage to get past Elbar's brashness and appeal to his sensibilities, you'll find that he's hiding a heart under his delicate ego. The magnitude of his emotions is his biggest weakness. And I, of course, happen to know how to stir them better than anyone else. Whoa there! Don't go getting ahead of yourself now. I don't want you magicking up nobody else's memory again. As if I had to. There's nothing Albar loves more in the world than a good tragedy, and you are nothing short of miserable. I'm sure that if you could stroke his ego a little and spin some sad tale, he would call off the trial and pardon you immediately. Saw stories all you need? Call me Weeper Wailer Adder then! I've done far worse than cry a little, save my butt. I ain't gonna break a sweat. <laughs> but that still begs the question, ma'am. Where'd that leave you if it works? Seth Blaine clearly taken aback by the sincerity of the question. Adder would have sworn they spied the faintest blush forming over her cheeks if he hadn't known her better. As I said, you don't need to worry about me. Elbar will call off the trial before he lets anyone soil my name or his by association. Is that right? He sure looks the type who don't need help soiling his anything. <laughs> Takes one wow. to know one, I suppose. Both the gazelle and the deer shared a mean, knowing grin. What do you say we call this even for now? 
Truce? Truce. Only until I can get you out of my mind, of course. Would you kindly mm. show me the way out, then? Hmm, could I even? I have an idea of how to get you out of here, but it's kind of a drag, and it's going to take us both quite a lot of mental preparation. <laughs> I'm getting exhausted just from thinking about it. Seth crossed her legs in a very calculated fashion. Ader couldn't do mass, however. <laughs> <laughs> what are you willing to do in exchange for my help? <laughs> oh, darn it. You got me right where you wanna, don't you? I've been playing hard to get, but I'm afraid a buck can only fight back for so long. <laughs> oh, what the hey? Come on up, you <laughs> goof off. I'll carry you there. <sighs> <laughs> Sep headed off in a seemingly random direction, not bothering to look at him twice. Hey, Sep, I I'm not that dumb. I, I was just messing with you. We can still... S Sep? Wait up! Don't give me the cold shoulder now! I've missed you too! Sap! <laughs> I love My the plan animation. To get you out of here involves I know, a right? abstract <clears throat> petition. I need you to follow the trail left by a particularly disruptive feeling. One that has been keeping me up every night since you ran away. Once again, we may have to change the rating on this game. Ader <laughs> <laughs> almost opened his mouth to intervene with his version of the story, but he managed to remind himself that he wasn't standing on solid enough grounds to argue. At first, I thought it was fear. I was afraid that you would summon the guards and tell everyone what happened. I was convinced that my time had come, and I prepared myself to embrace death. But days passed, and no one came knocking on my door. You really thought I was planning to tell on you like that? I was. I, I, I am scared as all get out. A prairie buck could deal with this gal being a mind-reading horn hottie. Not a gosh darn friggin' fireball! But that don't mean you stop being you. I'll never let nothing happen to you. So I saw, now and then. And once my fear vanished, I decided to stop worrying about you and return to normality. I managed somehow. Everything was going better than ever for me. And yet, the restlessness just kept growing. Ever since that night, I keep recalling parts of my life that I thought long forgotten. I can't take a single step without second-guessing myself. I fear I'm turning... soft. Weak? Ugh, I don't know. After what felt like hours walking, their journey came to an apparent end. A pristine marble wall blocked any further advance, so tall and proud, looking far more impregnable and solid from afar than any wall Ader had seen in the real world. It seemed endless and eternal. Is he gonna have to punch the wall down and to get out? He's gonna have to punch the wall down to get out. <laughs> Upon closer examination, however, the glamour built from lies and self disappeared. This imposing defense was actually full of breaches and crumbling apart. I lack the words to describe the change you've stirred within me, Adder, but that hardly matters anymore. All I know is that you have managed to slip past my defenses, and that means it's only a matter of time until someone does it on purpose. I need you to take advantage of my vulnerabilities to find the way back out, and then lead me to it, so I can close it. No one shall get so close to my heart again. Let me get this straight. The only way out of your mind is making you a worse person, somehow? <laughs> I suppose that is one way to put it, yes. Good people don't exactly thrive in the upper crust. That's why I'm closer than ever to power. And you... well, the new suits you just fine. I don't know, your majesty. I get the feeling you're being just the usual amount of ugly to this buck. You sure anything's changed at all? Don't mistake cooperation for forgiveness, Adder. You deserve my help, not my kindness. I am still terribly mad at you. Look, I know I messed up, and I messed up a bunch, but you ain't the only one with reason to be angry. You ain't got a clue what it's like to hide a charred chest and a secret like that from all your friends for a moon. I'm just saying, ma'am, if you think you get to be madder and adder, you're... Time to sell a ladder to a near Wait. hall where the <laughs> accidental pun left Ader's mind, escaped his mouth, and reached Seth's ears. Her lips began trembling, followed by her cheeks, a flush of red covered her nose, and for a second, it looked like she would lose their impromptu challenge. Ahem. As I was saying, your intrusion may yet prove to be a net positive on my life. Show me how to steal my heart, and I will gladly return the favor once we go back to the real world. 
but why uh -huh. would you go and leave something so important in these shovel hands? You sure you want me seeing all those memories? I, I mean, you know yourself really well, right? Can't you just go in there and use them inspection powers to point me to the exit? Introspection, Adder. And no, self-deception is much stronger than self-help. I'm self-aware enough to know that any attempt at self-analysis would only leave me crawling back into a cycle of self-loathing and make me lose control of both this place and myself. You forgot any self in there? <laughs> Except Claire made it quite obvious that this is not the time for quips. I can I was going to make a joke about her being selfish, but once you know what you're looking <laughs> you mean for, selfish? that's the extent of what I can do without the guidance of another gaze reader. And you're the closest I've seen to one in a decade. Besides, I firmly believe that in the time we've spent together, you have grown to understand me better than anyone else. Not that there was much in the way of competition to begin with. Edder was, despite all evidence pointing to the contrary, a rather simple boy with simple tastes and simple goals. Psychological journeys to the center of the mind are not exactly his field of expertise. So, I just gotta take a walk in the slums of your thoughts to find a hole in a wall I can fit through, and then we'll go cry together in front of Elbar so you can get back to your life and I can get back to mine, and we can stay out of each other's hair forever like you wanted. That it? Yes, but it won't be nearly as simple as you're making it sound. Defenses come in layers, each stronger than the last. I don't remember all the feelings I have locked away behind them, but you will. You will walk away carrying my pain with you. All That's right. definitely going to make him less obsessed with you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, furry psychonauts. They deserve, Adam. <laughs> a gaze reader can become an impotent witness to a person's worst nightmare, or worse yet, a participant Potent. in their darkest hour. That's a mighty fine reason to be careful, no doubt. But it don't sound all that convincing when you tried to mess with my head the minute you saw me walking down the street. <laughs> this and that are two completely different things. I needed to see if you were the deer who helped me. It, it was important. So abusing my power is all fine and good as long as I can make up a convincing excuse. <laughs> gotcha, teach. <laughs> <laughs> That's not... Uh, you can't truly be this obtuse. You're just saying words I can't understand, because you know I'm right. Stop <laughs> being a pest and make yourself useful for once, will you? Search around and see what you can find. I have other matters to attend to. Inside your own head? No, inside yours, duh. Be gone already. All right, all right, I'm going. Hold up. And this ain't Where supposed don't get to go, around, exactly. I, I can't just walk up to a guard and say, Good evening, sir. Would you kindly point me to the nearest memory? The guard manifested out of the sand, fully dressed and looking even meaner than the real ones. G good <laughs> evening, sir. Ader didn't even get to formulate his question. A little rumble proceeded to <laughs> wait, turning the sands below his feet into a bubbling mass. Ader ran and jumped from roof to roof as the whole district began growing under his feet. A familiar one at that. The dust finally settled, revealing a detailed recreation of the heartache district. Or, at the very least, the part Ader knew best. Which could only mean one thing. Our amateur mind traveler turned around, finding an otherworldly red mansion standing proudly against all the comparatively discreet houses around it. Ader had found his way back to the Desert Rose, as usual. Contrary to what the uninitiated in Illyrium's culture may think. I have to remember that's pronounced heirloom. <laughs> I keep thinking of Illyrium. <laughs> heirloom's culture may think the Desert Rose was most certainly not a house of ill repute. Quite the opposite, it was a jewel of the crown of Heartache District, maybe of the whole city. One would never be ashamed of being caught stepping in, for that would mean that they had the kind of resources to behold the multifarious dances, magic displays, and general extravagance as their, their usual patrons partook in. That well, sounds like my kind of place. Fury yeah, <laughs> would even dream of carrying enough coin in their pockets to afford a sojourn in this multifaceted cultural center. Needless to say, mm -hmm. it was not the kind of place someone like Ada would ever be allowed to frequent. And by frequent, I mean look at it from any distance shorter than 60 steps. He wasn't even allowed to breathe in his proximities lest he contaminate its air of nobility. Despite their strict <clears throat> anti ader policy, however, the guards that usually stood by the main gate didn't seem to mind his presence at all. They looked rather complacent and not at all stabby. Right, right, of course. <laughs> this is just one of Sep's memories. None of this is real. You ain't here at all. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess you're here. You're just not here here. So, uh, look, y'all mind if I come in through the front door just this once? Guards remained impassive. After much deliberation, Ader finally must mustered the courage to walk in. 
The Desert Rose is a marvel from foundation to ceiling, but its main hall is particularly impressive. Tapestries on every column displayed dance steps, while elaborate mosaics drew the palace's namesake flower over and over in every wall. Men were playing odes and flutes in the background, making music that didn't make any sound. Fountains of wine, hookah pipes, and beautiful does filled the room, assuaging all the rich deer and heirloom into spending enough money to fund a small nation. And who knows how much money they were making beyond the common room. The Desert Rose I certainly been... don't. <laughs> the Desert Rose should have been a marvel to behold in every sense, and yet, despite all the bustle, the only home Sep had ever known seemed rather dull and lifeless. You don't care a whole lot for this place, do you? No answer. Ca the uh, cavernal silence filling the crowded room sent shivers down Ader's spine. He quickly decided to stop loitering around and head to the first floor instead. The familiarity and sobriety of the room area was rather reassuring in comparison. It would have been positively awful to snoop around in such a place, so Ader carefully counted room after room until he was sure he found his destination. The heavy door opened to reveal a chamber far more impressive than any other alcove Ader's imagination could have conjured. Brief glance was enough to show it was bigger than Geoff's home and times infinite and times infinite more exquisite. Delicate carpets made up of intricate patterns covered the totality of the ground, from the entrance to the, lux to the luxurious bed in the center of the room, stopping only before the enclosed balcony. Dozens of cushions lay haphazardly against each other, displaying some sort of mating dance. They huddled in the middle of the chamber, on the corners against the wall, and on the bed as well. So, so many cushions. Ader lacked fingers to count all of them. So, oh, more than ten? <laughs> this was, in other words, Sep's room. Alrighty then, uh, what do you got in store for me? I hope you ain't forgotten we're still in public. Not that I think you're thinking about that, just, uh, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Once more, no reply. The only other sound other than Ader's voice was the one produced by a ghostly projection of Sep using an ink pine needle to fill the pages of a worn-out book. Ader took a few steps around this image of Sep, enjoying his newfound mobility as he studied her factions. Now, excited may be a bit too much to describe her, and impatient would be too harsh. She looked extremely disappointed. Oh, what's that silly little frown for, dear? Were you expecting the dessert cart instead? No, our servants have the decency to knock before they come in. The room became a blur for a brief moment as a door opened to reveal a silhouette of a doe. The jewelry she wore manifested itself sooner than her face. Ooh, interesting mental image. Ader jumped back behind the bed instinctively as he saw the older woman walking in. He had only crossed words with her twice in his life, but that was it been enough to engrave Miss Rochelle's name in his memory. A woman with a face that seemed to be perpetually locked in a smile, but it wasn't just a shallow smile, though. No. Her hot side remained still like a glass of water. Sep turned her face back to the mirror watching the scene, determined to look completely unfazed as she discreetly switched the book for a comb. Is it too much to ask for a little privacy in my room, at least? Privacy? Oh, <laughs> just see. Everything that happens within these walls is private. Privacy is my business, after all. But it's especially my business when the only barhan dancer in this house decides to disappear right before her first show of the day. I more than made up for it doing that stupid fortune teller sideshow you prepared for me. What else do you want? Hmm, what was it indeed? Let's see. Privacy, business, for showing in the morning. Oh, there you go. That's what I wanted to tell you. You missed your new introduction. A fiery princess born among dunes and ruins. The very last descendant of a long and mighty dynasty. Legends say that she was sired by the sun itself under the guise of a gazelle. Daka, daka, da, here come the drums, building up the reveal. We know not her true name, only her legacy. And so we call her by the name she would have been given in times of yore. Everything goes quiet. You step into the flames, and I shout, Jasif, princess of fire and sand. <gasps> Woo! Ovation! Everybody loves you. No. Oh, no. You didn't just say princess. I did just say princess. Oh, no. What? How? No! I can't be a... Uh, princess? Really? Why don't you go ahead and tell them to call me Sep while you're at it? Dear, I would never. I know how important your stage name is to you, and you know I adore your taste. Jasif is such a great little nickname. 
So mysterious and exotic and... Profitable. Powerful. Too much, perhaps. I'm afraid the title of queen sounded a bit too inaccessible. Men don't like having their power contested, dear. It's bad for business. Well, some men do. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like... Ah, uh, yes. The ever-thriving business of horn-eating. Well, someone's feeling sarcastic tonight. Are you really sure you're not expecting anyone else, dear? You radiate an aura of longing and solitude and... That wench told you, didn't she? I was going to say that you keep your eyes on the window like a grieving widow, but I appreciate your theory, too. Care to elaborate on which wench should tell me what? Why? What would keep me from lying to you if I did? You should go and ask that herd of snitches instead. Someone's bound to tell on me. Oh, I would. Believe me. But your sisters are all very busy at the moment. I know this may come as a surprise to you, but some of us have to do something called work. <sighs> Not again, please. You know when the other girls put on their fancy clothes and go spend some private time with all the well-off deer that come home? That's called working, dear. They get paid for that. Amazing. I know! And to think you do the same for free. Dictionary lacked words to describe the color Seth's face turn. So what are you going to do if I bring someone over again? Ground me? Ground me, she says. <laughs> Just see if... I do miss the times when I could scare you with that, but you're not a little girl anymore, are you? Look at you. You've grown so fast. And so, so much more than Thought and I could have expected. No wonder you have the whole city on your tail. <laughs> Seth instinctively hid her derriere behind her hands, embarrassed. Dater did his best not to follow the motion. <clears throat> don't think I don't understand where you're coming from, dear. You're young. You're wild. And I'm not saying that you can't have a little fun. But this is the Desert Rose. Not just Steve's charity for handsome, needy souls. I need some profit to keep this whole place running, but you seem determined to remain a living net loss. You know I have my hands tied, don't you? Your mother would curse me from beyond if I let you work here. Not to mention what your brothers would do. I'm sorry. Do I have more than one brother now? Well, don't forget that your one and only brother has ears everywhere. <laughs> If he hears that someone dared put a finger on you, the guards will find a streak of bodies hanged by the hooves in the sewers. And I will be right there to say, I told you. Hater gulped as he imagined the scene. He had met over protective fathers and brothers in many failed attempts at courting does in his town, but most of the time they just laughed at his horn size and let him be. Well, it's about time I prepare the next show. Do what you want with your life. But don't forget that you need to start pulling your own weight. If you still can. Miss Rochelle finished her cheeky remark on a slap to Seb's cheek. No, not the face one. That would have left her with some righteous fear and a semblance of dignity. The door closed <coughs> behind Miss Rochelle, but her presence remained long after she left. How long exactly was the amount of time it took Seb to stick her tongue out at the door? Yeah, <laughs> that'll show her. <laughs> she picked up her book once more as she made her way to the bed, and knowing the company by Ader's restless thoughts. <sighs> Good thing you're late. Ader started, thinking she was talking directly to him again. The initial scare passed once he realized it had been nothing but a straight thought, so he decided to investigate the source of her woes. A deep dark hue covered what little sky could be seen beyond the lattice covering the balcony. It was only getting more and more intense as the lamp tinder snuffed out the ferals one by one. Oh! <laughs> I get it! So this is what you wanted to show me, huh? <laughs> oh, Seb, I never would have taken you for the sign type. Ada took a seat by her side, watching her reaction change eagerly as a pebble flew right into the window. Now, distraught may be too much to describe her, and apprehensive would be too harsh. She was just being silly. Seb put the book down once more, straightening herself for her, but as she walked nonchalantly toward the window. Pebbles kept flying into the balcony and walls, but she was far more interested in messing with her clothes. Her visitor's insistence amused her ever so slightly, but she wouldn't usually let that show. Oh, come on, Sip. Don't keep a buck waiting while you're here contemplating. Ah, oh, that's an old saying. <laughs> her nightcloth was a bit too tidy for her taste. Perhaps if the collar hung looser. You look darn perfect as always, ma'am. 
Open the Open the God's forsaken window this instant! <laughs> Say what? Now there is. Sanders' neck curled over itself with the ugliest crack as his attention switched from Seth to the window. I know you're in there, damn it! Why are you keeping me waiting? You're the one who's late, you imbecile. I should just let you scream down there until the guards come looking for you. Sep looked up, seemingly exchanging answers, glances with Ader for a moment. But I'm feeling pretty generous tonight. Sep unlocked the window with an annoying smile and the confidence of a dancer that played their song successfully a thousand times. Ader followed, aghast. Her silhouette manifested against the lattice, commanding an absolute silence in the street below. Not even the burly fallow deer expecting her by the pergola could escape the overwhelming pressure of her apparition. The, this quietude wasn't meant to last, however. What a strange vision! I see a sun in the night! No! Foolish me! It must be the one they call Joseph, blessing me with her light! the hell is he wearing? Can you land on a tiny bit thicker? <laughs> Just a little bit. I think you're being too subtle. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Seth barely managed to keep herself from smirking at the side of the ridiculous mask sitting atop of her nightly visitor's enormous snout. In his mind, this was surely the first time this conversation had taken place, but Seth had memorized all the steps at this point. Jed rehearsed her show, so the tickets and won the crowd a dozen times over. I am the one they call Joseph indeed. And you? What words should I use for a masked madman screaming in the middle of the night? Madman will suffice. For I have indeed lost my wits and my mind. I saw you dancing among flames today, and with every move I felt a forbidden passion setting my heart ablaze. I fear your lovely image is seared into my eyes for all eternity. You know, ever I since it was pointed out in the previous... ...to as your most fervent servant and admirer. My sword shall greet the throat of any man that attempts to claim your affections for himself. Princess Oh, was like, hush, Stoker, I got a sword. In the previous stream, ever since it was pointed out that he and that, uh, that, that servant, that guard of his from earlier had a zap and kiff dynamic going on, <laughs> I keep thinking, what if... What if this guy had been voiced by Billy West doing a Zap Brannigan voice? <laughs> what would that have been like? I have never come to announce fun. myself as your favorite, most favorite, servant admirer. <laughs> Kiss. Anyway, um, go on. More champagne. Salvar's <laughs> <laughs> new fit of courtly poetry became a dissonant echo as Sep took both hands to her face. I'm going to choke that woman in her sleep. Thought mm -hmm. disappeared as soon as it arrived, unheard by anyone except Ader, who mentally patted Seth's shoulder. So may I have a lock of red hair to remember our affair. You can have my whole tail if it'll make you shut up. <laughs> Seth's words slipped from her mouth before she could catch him. The world froze for a moment as her suitor stood agape. With a single misstep, she found herself nearly falling to the ground and alone in uncharted territory. Music went on, even though she had lost her tempo. But, but, babe, I wrote this myself! I even had one of my guards follow you to find out which balcony led to your room. Also, my words could reach you. I wanted to pay you a nightly visit. Isn't that romantic? <laughs> Dozens of disembodied paragraphs scuttled through Ader's skull and stopped this. Seth <laughs> mentally went, went over all the nightly romance books in her library in a panic, desperately hoping to find the right cue to jump back and do their little dance. Ha! You dare speak of romance after exposing your intention to trespass? Sneaking under my window only to make your way into my bed is awfully inept of one that claims to serve me. You may as well just be a common thief. But how can I be a thief when you have stolen my heart? Do not doubt wow, my I words, deceive. I am no lowly horn eater. My desires are lacking in lust. It is love I have come to give you. Is that yeah, so? Yeah, because they're busy lusting over the bard's antlers. <laughs> and do not come back until you bring proof that you do not wish to steal my affection. I mean... <laughs> A quest? For your favor! <laughs> yes! I shall go and prove my... Yeah, yeah, good night. The masked deer <laughs> smirked as he held his onto his sword, running off to conquer hearts or whatever it is a captain of the guard does in his spare time.
Seth couldn't have cared any less if he had tried at that precise moment. <laughs> well, butter my backside and call me a biscuit, Seth. <laughs> you weren't kidding when you said you got a wrap around your little finger. I'm almost glad to see I wasn't the only one you played with tales of knights and princesses. <laughs> <sighs> I think a lot of people would like to butter Ader's backside. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I was trying. <laughs> So hard for once to be good for once in my horrendously perverted life. So you just, you just so and then you gotta go and do that to me. You gotta do, go and do that to me. Uh, almost. <laughs> Seth was about to lock the window, and her eyes caught a glimpse of what looked like a pile of hay attempting to walk away. Uh, that's what I get for talking. First you eavesdrop on my past, and now you spy on my present. Why, Adder, perhaps Ooh. you should be the one reading my fortune. Hey now! I need uh, that's a load of radish stew! I wasn't listening in! Nope, no ma'am! My pa taught me better than that! I, I, I was just taking a stroll around the district and, uh... <laughs> Looking for a hey, place to the rivets? And here I thought you were the type to take matters into his own hands. Oh my. <clears throat> Sep's mm. words took a moment to sink in. Fast Ader pointed the gazelle and puffed his cheeks up, failing to grasp the proper use of language to reply to her accusation. You better stop that if you want me to show you what I could do with these hands. Wait, wait, hold up. Uh, not like that. I mean it in the bad way. Like, like I'm going to whoop your ass if you don't. Can I get a moment to think this through? <laughs> Ada would remember the sheer third person pain of this out body experience and replay it in his nightmares for the rest of his lifetime and part of the next. Seb was rather gracious about it in retrospect. In retrospect. I get the distant feeling you are mad at me. Mad? Mad? I'm mad! I'm hungry and bruised and dizzy and my head hurts and I got lost a couple of times and I'm starving, but I ain't mad all right. <laughs> so listen up and listen well, because I got something to tell you. I'm listening. Sheesh. You! You got me pegged all wrong, you hear? I ain't in the business of eating horns. Never been and never will be. And I don't care how pretty you think you are. Even if I liked you, you can't just go around stealing kisses like it was no big deal. That ain't right, ma'am. Oh, but I haven't stolen anything. I fully intend to pay for that kiss, handsome. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You seen a price tag on my face? Uh, buy two kisses to get Adder's interest-free installment plan? Please no, tell just me just more about your installment plan. <laughs> I don't know what that word means. Know you. I don't even know why I'm telling you any of this. I just wanted to prove to myself I was smart enough to stay put all night without thinking of calling you once. But then I heard that dumbass hollering down your window, and, and I got so worried that... So worried that you hid behind a corner and waited until he left? <laughs> That's helpful. Darn right I hid! You see the size of that sword on his belt? You look just fine up there, but I would have lost my neck if I butted in. Seth's eyebrows raised slowly as she let her head fall on her hand. Did you break your backbone when you fell from the bridge? Excuse you, ma'am. I'm double backbone. Triple backboned even. But I'm telling you, I could have died for nothing, and you don't even flinch. You really, really just don't... You know what? This ain't worth it. I'm going home. But wait! You can't just leave like that. I, I still have to pay you back. It halted mid-step, threw shoulders back and forth as the sounds grew thicker in the street. I may not be all that smart, ma'am, but I've learned. Oh, I'd say I've learned a lesson or two on how to keep my head on my shoulders since I came to this city. And I can tell right away, you ain't the type to return favors. I don't know what do you see for a sap or a plain old Zelda ever want from me, but you're going to have to find yourself another buck to laugh at tonight. Is that so? Fine, then. If you see the one-eyed chub I was waiting for on the way back home, wish him luck figuring out how to read gazes all on his own. You ain't got nothing to worry about, ma'am. He'll just have to do without magic as usual. I hope he can do without food, too, because I'm going to throw away the desserts I ordered for him. That's a... Mm -hmm. No. Nah, yeah. For real? <laughs> no, it's a bluff. It's a bluffing. Am I? Both Aders watched intently as Seppa Makalinda extended an arm slowly through it. 
She opened her whole hand, save for two fingers, letting a tiny square pastry dangle out of the mushrubia. But it was not any pastry. Oh no. Adrian nearly drowned on his own saliva as he stared at the beautiful puff pastry filled with thick marmalade, covered with a generous layer of nuts slathered in honey, and topped with a beautiful plump date, cut to resemble a flower with an almond in its center. So now it's food porn. Yes. Don't forget they're in their mind, too, so yeah. <laughs> food porn in the mind. <laughs> that does sound delicious, though. Yeah, yeah it does. It probably worth and more I than always Nader's. get hungry just before we start streaming. <laughs> of course. It's probably worth more than Nader's total lifelong earnings. It was the kind of pastry kingdoms fell and were built for. It was a honeyed dental cavity waiting to happen. Catch. <laughs> pastry seemed to float briefly in the air as Seth let go of it. Ada hurled himself toward the divine gift that was being offered to him at Cushion its fall, thanking the gods for his colossal pastry-catching hands. He didn't so much eat his bribe as inhale it, believing himself unworthy of presenting such a treat upon his taste buds. Discovery of this new order in the scale of flavor could have been classified as a religious experience for a boy that had been feeding exclusively on tiny stale potatoes for a year, and mostly oats before that. I... <laughs> I think I've fallen in love with <laughs> Just don't fall on your face again on the way up. There was surely more banter to be appreciated as a newly bought buck dashed over almost vertically up a column. It was, after all, the beginning of a relationship based upon pastries, quick wits, and uninhibiting wine. But Ader couldn't hear a word through his wailing. Sip! Sip, can, can you hear me? Oh, please, Sip, just one! Just let me eat one of those, I beg you! What kind of messed up torture is this? <laughs> yeah. What in the name of the Hatsa are you doing? Smugly complacent image of passive and replaced by a smugly annoying present set. Feeling sorry for myself? <laughs> I thought it's what you were trying to- For the last time, I wasn't trying anything! I already told you what to do. You just need to use your powers to sort through my emotions and find the relevant memories. Did you intend to sit here and watch the whole season go by until you stumbled upon something important? What? <laughs> no, not at all. Come on, Sip. I ain't that dumb. That's- that's just what it looks like from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm open to ideas if you got them. A volcano about to erupt would have looked far more benevolent than Sep at that moment. Please tell me what to do, ma'am. This is too weird for me. I'd say I can't <laughs> believe this, but then again, it's my fault for putting so much trust in a poor excuse for an apprentice such as yourself. Say what? Think you got that backwards, missy? You were a poor excuse for a teacher. Every time I asked you to let me read you, you just looked away, said some weird riddle, and told me to think about it later when we were done with everything else. A good teacher <laughs> makes sure to only share as much information as their student can handle, and a good student is supposed to strive to learn more than they're taught. You should have done your homework and practiced on other people. And how was I supposed to do that? I spent moons trying to read my friend's gazes, but it was like, like I was all out of fire, you know? It, it was darker than before when I tried to look inside him. I couldn't see nothing at all. Even my boss looked colder than ever. But after you showed up, I, I stopped feeling like that. When I felt your warmth and, and I saw you smiling and, and talking to me, I, I don't know, something changed inside me. I felt like you'd lit my oil lamp again. Don't so the I secret ingredient... Realize is horny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's I'm not sure it. it's a secret. If you're going to be a smart ass and twist on my words to make me sound like I'm Randy as a trote, you can go find a way out of <laughs> Randy your head on your own. <laughs> or if I had a nickel yes. for every time it's someone's called me Randy as a trote. <laughs> hey, keep that sarcasm where I can see it. And where would that be? Gator opened and closed his mouth wordlessly a few times before turning and marching away from the desert rose. Wandering aimlessly around the desert in angry haste seemed like a good idea until it was obvious it was not. Quick glance revealed a rather amused Sep waiting expectantly for Ader's unavoidable concession. So where were we before you did the thing where you try to embarrass me so I'll stop talking about a thing you don't want to talk about? Something, something, we're gonna wind up dead if you don't teach me right? Fine, I'll be lenient and take my share of the blame. I tried to teach you to read gazes in the same way Mom taught me how to do so when I was a fawn. But it's evident that I was already leagues ahead of you back then. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm a dumbass and a thick skull and I'm lanky and this is the closest my family's ever gotten to read. See, I ain't arguing or anything. Can we move on with the lesson now? Tep stopped walking for all a reply. Ader mimicked her, secretly congratulating himself for winning the argument somehow. <laughs> Ignoring her traveling companion's silent rejoicing, Sep stared at the ground until a cushion sprouted from it, fully formed and fluffy. Ader awaited his turn eagerly, but she didn't extend the favor to him, thus resting on his, his butt on anything other than sand would weaken his resolve. Tell me, Adder, do you know why us gaze readers have survived so long? Why no one knows our names when our power is so unbelievably useful? Oh man, more riddles? Uh, I don't know, ma'am. I figure either you're good at keeping secrets or you end up getting torched every other week like the merchant. Close, but not quite. You are correct in one assumption, however. If a Barhan fortune teller was to say exactly what they heard inside someone else's mind, they'd be thrown into the pyre without any further questions. It's nothing quite as simple as that, no. There's a bigger reason why we, of all Sefi, have escaped pursuit. Even with our powers being so versatile and obvious, we are not infallible, nor irreplaceable. We weren't born to announce great prophecies or change fates. There's a brief pause, because Al harumph solemnly, trying to signal that silence was out of the question. All right, Teach. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what do we do with the stuff we find out if we can't say it, or change it, or do nothing about it? Our job consists of weaving histories, Adder. We take the broken bits and pieces that make up a past and tie them together to form a present. We learn and advise, for understanding the past is the closest anyone can get to predicting the future. These are our fortunes. So we're alive because we're a bunch of scammers making up tall tales. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Mind if we skip to the important bits now? Ugh, how can you be so bad at this? You're supposed to expand your mind, understand the heft and malleability of your abilities in shaping someone else's fortune, and realize how liberating the lack of your own preset destiny is. You still speaking, Sirnar? That made a noise that Adar could impossibly describe, but that managed to transmit without delay the feelings of getting cussed out in another language. Look, ma'am, I don't mean no offense, but we're just wasting time or whatever it is you waste here. I just gotta know how to use my eye magic thing to spot your weaknesses. Nothing else. You can't. That's not what this power does. All you can do is follow a current of emotion through the Hatsa, watching the many memories it ties together until you reach its logical conclusion. There's a shared source for all of them. Yeah, she's she's not uh, speaking at Ader's level here. <laughs> nope. <Yes. laughs> she, she keeps trying to... Uh, weave together this very esoteric thing while he just wants to know where to how do I shoot the eye laser yes. at the big glowy point yes. to make yeah. it work <laughs> how, do I put the, how do I put the basketball in the net <laughs> how does I shot web <laughs> okay so how do I do that I don't know but it's not that hard damn it Think of the emotion you want to capture and then follow it. Spin the threads, sail the current, pull the carrots out, or whatever it is that you farmers do. Just picture what you want. I she think the to metaphors angry. is it's just totally to well, I like that. Maybe it's because I'm dense, but I've always been the kind of buck that learns better watching someone else do things first. Riddle me this. What do you imagine when you're trying to find your way through this stuff? Seb looked completely taken aback at the question. Her eyes shifted nervously from place to place until she realized that there was literally nothing else to look at in the desert but the boy in front of her. It's a diary, okay? I know what you're going to say. Talking to myself is weird. Well, screw that. I've spent most of my life alone. Besides, I've been writing since I was a child. Do you know how hard it is to give up that kind of... You don't have a clue what a diary is, do you? <laughs> See, she, she's like way up here and Ader's down here and she can't even comprehend where Ader is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's an aunt and I'm a giant. Ader shook his head awkwardly. Felt almost bad seeing how pointlessly flustered she'd gotten. After a few moments of contemplation, Sep turned her face down, set toward her lap. She opened her hands with her palms turned up, watching them intently as dust began to gather in the shape of a rather unassuming worn-out book. It was the same one he'd seen in her room. A diary is like a friend in a book. Uh, <clears throat> it's a place where you write down all of your memories. <laughs> 
so when I'm feeling nostalgic, be it in the real world or here, I just open my diary, think of what kind of memory I want to see, look for an entry, and... Sounds easy, that should do. Andrew snatched a book from Seth's hands, casually turning at it, flipping the pages as he tried to figure out how to use the book. Hey! Return my diary to me at once! It's private! Come on, Sep, you know me. Literacy is the name of a soup where I come from. I just want to take a quick look at this diary thing and see if I can find anything. There's nothing for you in there! Give it back! I said, give it back! Sep tell you the book with a strength that she couldn't have possibly had in the real world. Ada instinctively pulled back, afraid that either the book or Sep would get hurt if he let go. They both grappled with the book, pushing it back and forth until it finally slipped away from Ada's clumsy hands, floating momentarily op mo uh, momentaneously open over the two. Ada dashed toward the book, throwing himself to the ground to catch it. Sep didn't wait for the fall, using Ada's hands as a trampoline to jump and grab the book before it plummeted. Don't you dare touch my things ever again! She clutched the well, book against her chest, that. far angry and more embarrassed than she yet than she had meant to let on. Ada was blowing the surprise on the surprisingly painful step marks he left when he noticed something falling from the sky, a little piece of paper. It landed carefully on Ada's hands of all places, as if inviting him to look at it. Uh, Sam, wait, you forgot a... The ground before Ada began trembling as a small dust storm gathered around the page. The walls began raising from the ground as a new room emerged, forcing them both to move back towards each other. What page was that? What did you... Honey, please, let me in. Ah, go away! No! Oh, Seb, I'm so sorry I scared you. I'm... I'm not mad, see? You didn't make me mad. I just got a tad upset because I was trying to have an important conversation with Dad while you kept tugging at my sleeve, and I... I lost my temper. I didn't mean to yell at you like that. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I... I really am. It's not your fault this is happening. Gazelle Fawn stepped away from the door, letting the doe walk in at last. That's okay. We all make mistakes. As long as you understand. Sep took Zara's hand and patted it softly like an old woman would. <laughs> Where did you learn that? Tree Dad says it. <laughs> he talks funny. Illagrab is not your dad, sweetheart. Nah, you're oh. not my mom, too. But that's okay. I like you more than my old mom. She never said sorry to me. I'll make you a present for being a good mom! The tiny gazelle turned away from Zara and began scampering around the room, looking for the perfect cushion to flop down on. She produced a piece of charcoal from the sleeves of her dress and crumpled a piece of paper and began doodling on it. Or at least, that's what Zara thought at first. She soon realized that the lines Sep was drawing on the paper were far more elaborate than mere scribbles. Did Illagrab teach you how to write, too? Mm, no, Big Bro teach me. He says I have to do his homework to pay for the room or he'll kick me out. But he doesn't know that I like it. Shh. Zara didn't have time to react to this revelation as a piece of sooty paper was shoved straight into her snout. For you, it says I like mom a lot. So you don't forget and get angry again. Zara stared at the piece of paper, flummoxed. Then at Seb, who was looking back at her expectantly in turn. And then she gave Seb the strongest hug she'd ever given anyone. It was perhaps the first hug the fawn had ever known. Zara let go of her all of a sudden, prompting a quizzical look from her child. I have just the perfect gift for you. Wait right here. The image of a happy mother Aww. dashing out of the room dissolved into heavy clouds of dust. The gazelle that remained after the sand dissipated looked entirely too meek and gone to be the Sep Ader do. I I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Ader bent down, picked up the piece of paper, and handed it back to Sep. She pushed the whole diary into his hands instead. Keep that stupid thing. It's obvious that you can make my diary work just as well as I can. No way! I can't even read it! How am I supposed to... Uh, huh? Uh, wait, I, I love... Mom? Are... Are these words? What's going on? <gasps> Hold up. Don't tell me I'm a natural word reader. Of course not. Text stops making any sense inside people's minds for some reason. The writing here doesn't make any sense either. It just says what I know it should say. It wouldn't be too far-fetched to assume that once you've seen the memory attached to the entry, you know, too. Whoa! Oh, you're right! This ain't the only page with words. Let me see, let me see! I can read the ones I saw before and... 
Hey, I think I know this one-eyed chub you're talking about here. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Have fun stripping me of the last readout of privacy I had left in my life. Hey, Sip, look at me. I, I won't do nothing like that, okay? I promise I'll only read what I need to find a way out and give it back as soon as I'm done. There's no need. It's not the real one. The flicker of rest, the bug burst into innocuous flames within Ader's hands. Smoke and the ashes all vanished into the air within seconds. So I looked at Ader's hand, focused, and made a new one appear exactly where the previous one was. Nothing is real here. Except vanished without another word, and soon the rest of the world followed after. The diary remained unaffected by the darkness that extended in all directions, however, as if inviting Ader to get lost in its contents. Something told him that the moment he turned a page, there would be no turning back. <laughs> so uh which one do we have here we have the uh the fourth wall breaking one <laughs> actually i'm very curious to see how he handles a fourth wall break <laughs> oh dang it <laughs> it's real it's real i was really hoping he'd be like hold on a second now <laughs> our selfish me are working tirelessly every day to ensure that the diary works like a charm you off chance you found any bugs? No, you didn't. But if you super did, please contact the party to email through Steam for review bombing. Thank you. Okay, Seth's diary. Don't open that door. Grace? Scene case is 5 out of 31. Okay, so this is interesting. This is finally the first sort of gameplay we have aside from just like little choices. Oh, look at the top there. Dear Diary, if anyone other than me is reading this, please burst into the flames and kill them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so... It's like a her story I love mom. Thing. Oh, why don't you click sort by unread? On the right. There you go. Add or something? I mean, I guess these are all in red. I think we, but surely we saw I Love Mom, right? Hmm. Because that was the, the one we just saw, I'd have thought. Oh, oh, you just read. <laughs> I can click see this video. Dear Diary, Mom says you are mine now and Sid, you are a friend and a buck and I can tell you things when C is busy and I can tell her you are like Yoff and Tailored, but not Yoff and Tailored, but not dumb. <laughs> uh, Yoff. Here. She okay. knew Yoff even as a child. Yeah, well, he's the, I'm pretty sure he's the one she's been referring to as her brother. Maybe. I don't know, he didn't look that old. That's the thing that kind of gets me. I didn't think he was that old. He's just short. Yeah. <laughs> he's just short. All right, so we've got Air. Dear Diary, um, Mom telling me today that she's a Dow and I'm a Gazelle. But we're family, and I said I now, but she said the rest don't now, so they're dumb, and I agree. Technically, 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 technically. <laughs> okay, so we've definitely seen that one. <laughs> don't open that door. You guy came back last night, he smelled really bad. Yeah, says that he's here to return me to my real parents because everybody hates me. I hit him, he hit me back. We hit each other a lot, and I got so angry that I grabbed his head and pulled at his hair. Then I felt really strained inside, like my eyes were really sore. I don't know what I did, but Yoff was crying. He won't let me see, but it must have hurt a lot. Mom came when she heard, but a guy was with her, and he got really mad. He screamed at me and Mom, asking who I was and calling Mom names. I don't know what's happening. They left me all alone up here. I can still hear them screaming in Mom's room. I'm scared. I don't think we've seen this one. Nope. I think it's a brief. No, we did. We yeah, did I see this one. Oh, we did? Oh, I see. It was only oh. very, very brief. Yeah, but we didn't get to see the whole thing, yeah. Once more, Ader felt his mind being desperately dragged away from this memory as much as he tried to see what lay beyond that door. The smell of blood and smoke clung to his skin and er as everything went dark. The threat of thought Ader was falling dissipated into something untraversable. This current would take him any further. Okay. Yeah. 
So what about alone? I, I think they just me, me. I can't choose. This entry contains several pages. I should have left. I should have left. I should have left. I hope Geoff gets stabbed in his sleep. I hope he dies as he crawls back. I give up. The nightmares won't stop. I hate deer. I hate deer. Ooh. Oh, honey, oh, come I've... on. You oh. can't stay mad at your poor brother forever. He is no brother of mine. What would Thar say if she saw you two fighting like that? She can't say anything anymore, can she? I did. Okay, so even if we have seen some of these memories before, we're getting some additional choices now. Yeah. The current became more and more complex as Ader traveled down this path and mixed mysterious emotions and torrential thoughts that would make little sense to him without further context. Memory's missing one. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So Ooh. he's got. He, we're basically playing. I'm trying to remember what the game was, but basically we're yep. trying to fill in the memories. Yeah, so it's like uh, her story or uh, what was the other game? The, the Doom. Uh, that's what it's starting to remind me of. Let's see here. Dear Diary, how are you? Am I supposed to say that? It's been a whole eternity since the last time I wrote an entry. I do not suppose that this is bound to happen again anytime soon. Referring to a book in second person is quite an awkward thing to do, especially for the famously obscure Jesse for the eternal novelty of the Desert Rose. Yes, as you can see, this is hardly the most pretentious thing I've done as of late. God, say, I really used to do this every day as a child. Anyway, you may be wondering why I'm writing now of all times. Should be one. I would be wondering, at least. I had to endure a rather tumultuous night, and I cannot sleep as much as I try. I really feel the need to get this off my chest and tell someone what happened, but I fear you remain the closest thing I have to a confidant. This is getting more pathetic by the second, so I might as well just lean into it and explain from the beginning. This says this is page five of six, interestingly. <laughs> Weird. Oh, she. Oh, <laughs> what did page right. one say, though? Uh, this, that was page one. Oh, it was. Oh, okay. It was five. That's weird. Okay. So That's I a glitch. Guess, I should I probably guess tell them about. I did say that this is maybe a little buggy right now. Yeah. Yeah, true. I have a crush. You know diary. I, I think I do. And I think it's mutual because every time I visit the Temple of Hera, I find the same white haired creature watching intently from afar. Their presence then shivers down my spine, the good kind of shivers. Their long white hair is so graceful and ethereal, but their body is so chiseled, too. They look like they could snap an iron beam with their own hands. Oh, but what I really love is the way they stare at me, so intense, so hungry, and... I may have stayed a tad too long in the temple looking for my absent watcher. It was far too late to risk walking home when the temple lies so close to the slums, and I knew I would not hear the end of it if I disappeared two nights in a row, so I decided instead to take a completely different kind of risk. I snuck into the royal pathway. I was crossing the stretch that goes right over Slander when who do I see but the mysterious albino running after Gioff, no less. I need to talk to them more now than ever, I thought. We have so much in common. So there I was enjoying the show, and I heard a patrol coming my way. I tried to leave quietly as usual, knowing they aren't ever precisely in a hurry, when a ridiculously eager new recruit managed to sneak up on me. The second I was cornered against a railing, no chance to escape. I knew his partner well enough. Awful old man. He gave me the choice that was truly not one to humiliate myself to prove my identity or get dragged to the dungeon. In retrospective, I, that would have been the smart choice. I could have just walked in and told Illgrab what happened. But pride would not have me relying on old friends, so I tried to buy my way out as I would normally do. Except I miscalculated. I said too much, and the guard must have noticed some serious gaps in his memory. He lunged forward, grabbed my neck as I convinced myself I was going to die. I almost felt... Is it silly to feel that a single sentence would tarnish you, diary? If I write these words down, they will always be there for me to see and remember. That would not help, would it? I have no control over my thoughts, but I have control over these words at least, so I choose not to say them to you. It doesn't matter either way, for that moment didn't last. Get your mitts off her, shouts on this random one-eyed chubby row deer in the thickest accent I ever heard in my life. And he screams and screams at them to leave me alone, and not content with that, he climbs half the height of the bridge and falls on his head. It was adorable as it was sad, but it seemed to have made enough of an impression to prompt the new guard to do the obvious right thing and take the creep to the dungeon instead of me. So I'm writing today because I, I want to remember that. The synonymous act of heroism? No, that may be too great a name. Idiocy? Selflessness? <laughs> selflessness begets selflessness. That should be a proverb. Does that sound like a proverb to you, Diary? I promised the boy that I would make up to him personally, but I'd better steer clear of the slums for a while. I will find him, though, eventually. I trust my bad luck just fine. I am still awake, as uh, thought keeps encroaching over all the others. 
I just remembered how hot and bothered that idiot got when the guard accused him of being a horn eater. That is what prompted him to climb the bridge, not what happened before. Did he notice my horns at all? <clears throat> just who do you think you are? Yeah, this is probably going to be exactly I, the same thing. I won't fall for your barn. Maybe. I don't suppose you would... There's buttons Can't on the top right and left if you want to just take it. Take a step back. What? But she's trespassing. What if I say skip memory? <laughs> hmm. Hashtag a gab. <laughs> I don't know what they're referring to right here because I skipped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only saying Algarve. Yeah, it looks like it might might just skip you to the next decision point, which doesn't help because now you have no context. <laughs> I think she's talking with a guard, but yes, that's what I suspect. <laughs> I'm so dead. I'm so, so, so dead. It's all right. I lived a good life. And I could say bye with a smile. <laughs> Tell my friends I love them and burn me with my purse for my boss figures out where all the missing rivets go. For the last time, Adder, the wine was not poisoned. Adder couldn't believe her, but then again, he could barely believe anything at this point. He didn't figs and dates and honey pastries by the dozen, sitting on cushions so like clouds, and he drunk wine so sweet they could barely believe it was liquor. So easy to drink it was, uh, by the time they finished the first picture, they were only drinking from each other's mouth instead. And now, oh my was, god! He was on his bed with a disheveled gazelle in one hand and a tiny ornate cup in the other. Now, don't take me wrong. Now, I'm just saying... Yeah, yeah. A gazelle inviting a poor buck to a fancy palace, feeding him food this good and getting him all drunk? I've heard this kind of story before, ma'am. And it always ends with Barhan curses and deer turn to stone. <laughs> well, a part of you is going to turn to stone, but... <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> like I could make uh, it any Why is this game always saying what I'm thinking? <laughs> why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> How am I supposed to make with the ha ha when the game is happening? Talking about your school. You're being you out picked. <laughs> no, I'm thinking that maybe it really is as thick as y'all say, because as much as I try, and I tried, believe me, I just can't shake the feeling this is just too good to be true. You sure you ain't about to curse me or something? <laughs> so what if I am? Hmm? What if it turns out I'm a Sefi and I put a spell on you? Isn't it a little too late to run? You know what? I think I just let you do whatever you want to me at this point. <laughs> just don't leave any mark. No, I'm definitely not ever going to leave burn scars That's on you. Inappropriate. <laughs> whatever happened to the shy boy I took home today? You served him wine, ma'am. He drank it, and now that he's drunk it, he's drunk. <laughs> and that really makes him feel like telling you how pretty your horns look <laughs> and how cute your fluffy little tail is and and how much he loves your hip shaking, earthquaking, heart <laughs> melting butt. So that's just the wine talking, <laughs> hmm? Not a chance, ma'am. Addison, son of Garfot, says what he thinks all day, every day. Wine just makes him say it a little louder. Really? I'm not so sure about that. I have a feeling that you'll start looking for excuses the moment alcohol stops being one. And I'm going to take the brunt of the blame, as usual. Hey now! I may look like a crook and smell like a crook and talk like a crook, but there ain't nothing farther from the truth, ma'am. I'm a knight at heart, and I say I'm in everything that I did today. That man is a crook! <laughs> Might you say? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, you are drunk. Andrew took both of his hands to his mouth, effectively hiding his whole face instead. You didn't hear any of that. Oh, I most certainly did. How could I forget I was dining with Sir Adder? No, Lord Adder, perhaps. <laughs> Milor Adderson of the High Field. <laughs> it's Adderson of the Upper Field. And you're the last person in the world that gets to make fun of me for wanting to be something I ain't, Sep. At least I have the decency to call myself Jacif before and after two cups of wine. And so should you, before you slip and tell someone. Don't you worry your pretty striped face. Your secret's safe with me. 
I won't tell nobody you're a sap if you promise you won't tell them I'm a horn eater. I refuse to make any such promises unless you can prove your aptitude for keeping the secrets you've stolen. Huh? Also, you need What's to prove that, that you're a horn eater. You think I'm gonna go and <laughs> spill the beans the moment you turn around? All righty then. I dare you to come at me with any kooky, spooky, mind reading, magic stuff you got. My lips are sealed, ma'am. I won't breathe a word. Is that so? Then brace yourself, Adder. I'm about to show you a millinery memory altering technique. A waterfall of wine fell on Adder's face. <laughs> Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I'm still entertained. Yeah, I yeah. think this thing is not working. I uh, think we may have glitched into a into maybe. a different scene by hitting the skip button by mistake. You hmm. don't know. Hey, uh, Maxi, if you're having problems with this kind of stuff, I am a game developer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you? I didn't know that, Miller. Oh, yeah. yeah. I work as a yeah. Unity developer for an advertising agency that does VR and AR stuff. Um, well, I'll be really? Slugled. I will be bamboozled, flim flammed, and shanghaied. <laughs> Wait. Why did I manage to get that huge goddamn mess? Elvar's situation under control, the evening with Vader went surprisingly well. He is amusing even when he's not nervous, provides great if hard to follow conversation, and it's truly a delight to see someone eat so eagerly. Uh, I never dined with someone so hungry. Believe me, he was he was starved. Hmm, I can almost swear he'd never eaten once in his life, so I made sure to feed him properly. Perhaps one day I shall recount the night I taught Sir Anderson the high field table manners, though ah, I should guess I should explain. I think this page counter is not getting reset. Ooh, yes. no. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's bad. Ah, that's fine. It seems that's the poor, poor slum dweller is far more ambitious than I gave him credit for. He has some truly tall and deluded dreams about becoming a knight that I'd just love to hear more of. So I don't believe I'm quite idle enough to follow up on the adventure of some prairie bum. Um, am I? So wait, what, what happens if I do this? <laughs> this is definitely... And so click the other one. It's not often that Ader gets to take a good look at his back, much less while he's sweeping the entrance to the temple. It would seem, however, that this memory started with someone staring intently from a distance. Two people, actually. Nice rock you have there, broom boy! Oh, shucks! You really think so? <laughs> oh, no, yes, this is quite impressive. impressive. For Joe! <laughs> then they high fived each other in slow motion. <laughs> yes. Say what? You want to get down here and say that to my fa- Keep your head and walk away. Huh? This is Seb. What you doing here? Saving your neck, obviously. What do you think you're doing? Elbar won't lower himself to your level, but don't doubt for a second that he will send his guards after you if you provoke him. I'm the one provoking him? Didn't you just hear what he said? Oh, please. Can't you see? He's only insulting your looks because he doesn't have anything more meaningful to say about you. He thinks you're so weak that you will crumble hearing a shallow insult. <laughs> Prove him wrong. Don't give him the satisfaction of seeing you flustered. You know what? That's... That's a for real good call. Yeah. This one of them mind-reading lessons of yours? No, that's just how life is. If you don't want to have your cute little horns thrown in the dungeon, you do well to keep your feelings in check around those that hold more power than you. And just so you know, I like them short anyway. F for real? I mean... <laughs> yeah, of course! <laughs> how come I hadn't thought about this earlier? I bet he's the one feeling threatened by my horn size. You know what they say, the shorter the sticks, the longer the... Hex. <laughs> <laughs> if only you knew. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, something... Oh, it's also midnight. So there's, yeah, it is midnight. It is midnight. So Okay, it's kind of so, weird because I half think that the weird ordering of these things is almost on purpose. We've done a lot of, or like a little bit of time jumpy stuff before this. And yeah, then again, you're just like, kind of ripping through her memories randomly. Like, it would make sense, but it's I feel kind like, of hard to tell. I feel like uh, we've, we've, we've reached a point in this build of the game where 
Um, I, I feel like we must have triggered at least one glitch tonight, but because of the, you know, the, the kind of surreal memory hoppy jumpy nature of this part of the game, it's a little difficult to say exactly at what point the glitch happened. So, um, I know that, uh, Maxi is actually watching these streams, um, at least the, uh, the VOD. So, um, Got an interesting thing for you to see tonight. <laughs> hmm. see, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that it is a glitch so far. I think this is sort of working as intended, except that it's just a little janky at the moment. Yeah, Ooh. that's always the yeah, thing. Well. I have to go and double check it again, but uh, it looks like it was just uh, a pay, uh, a, pay, a sort of a memory thing, like uh, from one page to the other. Yeah. Yeah, See, I'm. Uh, I, I, th I think I get what's supposed to be happening here is that we go into one memory and it's supposed to prompt a uh, fork into a different memory, but we're only yeah, we're to supposed to be following trails. trails. We're only okay. supposed we're only allowed to follow memories that have like certain pre prerequisite memories met, but yes, we don't actually know what those memories are. We're just told that we don't have them, right. So this yeah, is kind of, in a way, it's a maze, but it's like a memory maze. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. my idea is that we're trying to follow her more of an uh, emotional sort of ride rather than a temporal. Yeah, one. exactly. It's interesting. Well, that's kind of what she told us, wasn't it? Yeah. That we were supposed to be following a thread of emotions. We're supposed to be following her hot stuff. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I'll follow her hot side anywhere yeah. it goes. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 now, now watch as Andrew says the exact same thing. I'll follow her hot side. <laughs> God, I cannot get over how many times this game has done that to me. <laughs> it is the best fan fiction ever. <laughs> but it, it, is, is he, can you call it fan fiction if it's canon? No, no, you can't. Doesn't it I mean it like? I mean, I don't know. If it, is it isn't an author supposed to be a fan of their own characters? <laughs> well, I'd be Me? concerned if an author hated them. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean that's what happened. The, that's what happened with Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say just ask a uh, Greg and Decca. <laughs> he had no remorse. To me, fan fiction has always been the ultimate tease. They want to keep you going with all this good teasing. And this is really good at it. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. It sure is. And then they kissed. Mm. Well, I think they've done far more than that at this point. Yeah. Lynn, Lynn, Lynn probably thinks so. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming <laughs> that Lynn. there is still a way to complete this right now to get to the end of the chapter. Oh, I, I would be shocked if there weren't. Yeah. yeah. But they'll have to wait for next time because there seem to be a lot of scenes here to go through. Yeah, and we have, you know, reached the 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 end of the line for the night. It's so witching hour. We have at least one more of these uh ahead of us for the future. Cool. And now it is time for us to say goodbye to all our company. We will close this book for tonight and probably open it up again tomorrow. Yeah, same bat time, same bat channel. Yeah. All right. So, good night, everybody. I good night. Good folks. night. Sleep tight. Don't let. I don't know. Nice. D d well, do let me bite. I'm a little peckish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.